Welcome to week three of our video series, Defined Who God Says You Are. Make sure that you have your workbook with you because today we're going to learn that we are transformed by the gospel. Last week, we learned that we are broken by sin. When people sin, they tear or break apart their relationship with God. They are separated from God by their sin. And we actually have a motion that we like to do that shows us that. So put your hands in front of your face like this and show me what it looks like when our sin separates us from God. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, God doesn't move. God stays the same, but our sin separates us from him because God is perfect and holy and he can't be around sin. He just can't. The good news is that God has a solution to our sin problem and that's what we're going to learn about today. Go ahead and open your books to page 22. Under that title there where it says transformed by the gospel, that's our topic for today, you'll see a definition for the word transformed. And if you read it with me, transformed means to be changed completely. So I have a question. Have y'all ever heard about Transformers? There's Transformers toys, Transformers comic books, Transformers movies, Transformers TV show. Transformers is a big deal. So I actually have one of the Transformers toys right here. This is Bumblebee, and he's my absolute favorite Transformer. Um, he goes from being a yellow car to being a robot. So see, you can see his face right there. You can see that he's got legs and arms, but you can also see, look, this is a car door. This is a tire. You can see the front end of a car. You might recognize that kind of car. You can see he's got wheels down here. So Transformers can go from being a car to being a robot to being a car again. It's crazy cool. They transform between the, between the different things, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. My Padre and I used to love watching Transformers, and one of my best friends in college actually got me this Transformer toy for my birthday one year, and I still have it. So I want to show you a short video clip of some of these Transformers going from car to robot and back to car again. I want to show you their super cool transformations. cool to see their transformation? How do they do that? Just like the definition says, they changed completely from one thing to another. Now, that's just a movie and this little bumblebee is just a toy, but there is a real transformer who can change your life and his name is Jesus. When a person trusts Jesus as their savior, he or she is completely changed. He or she is forgiven of their sin, adopted into God's family, wants to act differently, and is full of God's love. And so that's what we're going to learn about today. If you look at the bottom of your page, you'll see our little icons for know, understand, and discover. And so let's read those together, okay? Under know, it says trusting in Jesus for salvation transforms your identity. Under understand, it says God's salvation is eternal. Nothing can separate a believer from God's love. And finally, if we look at discover, it says God's salvation is a gift that every person needs and can receive. Next, let's look at our key verse for today on page 23. Everybody say Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Good job. It says, for you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but is God's gift, not from works so that no one can boast. The man who wrote the book of Ephesians is named Paul, and we're going to read a story in the Bible about how God transformed his life. As we read this story, I want you to try and identify all the ways that Paul changed. Now, when this event happened in Paul's life, he was called Saul. Saul is the Hebrew version of his name, and Paul is the Greek version, kind of like how the English name John is said Juan in Spanish. And so know that Paul and Saul are the same person. 
So let's go ahead and start reading our story today. If you want to read along with me, you can look at the bottom half of page 23 in your activity books. So everybody say Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 20. All right, friends, read along with me or listen as I read this story. Saul was an enemy of those who believed in Jesus. Saul entered house after house and dragged the believers away to prison. He made murderous threats against Jesus' followers, requesting permission from the high priest to travel to Damascus and arrest believers there. I want everybody to put your wrists together just like this, like you've been arrested, like you're your wrists are in handcuffs, okay? As Saul was nearing Damascus, a bright light from heaven flashed around him. Everybody squint your eyes and try and cover them from the light. The light blinded Saul and he fell to the ground. I may or may not have spilled my coffee when I fell to the ground, but that's okay. Let's keep going. He heard a voice ask, why are you persecuting me? To be persecuted is to be hurt or treated poorly because of what you believe in. Who do you think was asking this question? Why are you persecuting me? Who could that have been? Who are you, Lord? Saul answered. I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting, was the answer. Go into the city and you will be told what to do. Saul's traveling partners led him into the city. He could not see for three days. Everybody go ahead and close your eyes and continue listening to the story and don't open them until I say, okay? God told a man named Ananias, go to Saul. He has been praying. He knows that you are coming to help him see again. Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard how much evil this man has done. Guys, would you be nervous if God asked you as a Christian to go and meet a man who had been persecuting and hurting Christians? Everybody say, uh, yeah. I would have been nervous too. Let's see what happens. God replied, go, because I have chosen this man to tell the Gentiles about me. Ananias obeyed God. When he put his hands on Saul's eyes, Saul could see again. So hopefully your eyes are still closed. I want you to put your hands over your eyes. And on the count of three, we're going to uncover our eyes with our hands, open them, and we'll be able to see again. Ready? One, two, three. Good job, guys. So Saul could see again. Saul was baptized and immediately began to preach in the synagogues about Jesus. Jesus is God's son, Saul announced. Everybody shout that. Ready? Jesus is God's son. Good job, guys. Some Jews were angry with Saul's new message. Everybody say, uh-oh. They plotted to kill him. Saul's friends helped him escape Damascus by lowering him over the wall in a basket. Saul went back to Jerusalem to continue to speak boldly about his faith in Jesus. So guys, remember before I started reading the story, I asked you to pay special attention and try and identify all the ways that you heard that Saul had changed throughout the story. So let's talk about a couple of those things. Saul went from persecuting Christians to hurting them because of what they believed in, to leading people to become Christians, to telling them about Jesus so that they could have a relationship with him. Everybody say, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a huge change. Saul went from physically, he was able to see at the beginning of our story, right? But then what happened? He was blind. And then by the end of the story, what happened? He could see again. He got his sight back. Saul went from unbelief to not believing in Jesus, to being a believer, to believing that God is who he says he is, that Jesus is the son of God, all right? He went from being separated from God, just like our motion shows, to being in a relationship with God. The story said that he went from being an enemy of Jesus to a friend of Jesus. Guys, there were so many transformations, huge transformations in Saul's life because he met Jesus. Before this encounter with Jesus, Saul thought that he was blameless, that he was a law-abiding follower of God, that he didn't make any mistakes. But meeting Jesus made it clear that he was a sinner who needed forgiveness. Jesus appeared to Saul and changed his life from the inside out. 
And so let's look back on page 22 at our know, understand, and discover points. And let's talk about them real quick. So where it says no, it says trusting in Jesus for salvation transforms your identity. The Bible tells us that God rules. That's the first part of the gospel, right? We learned in week one that God created us in his image and for his glory. Do you remember that? Last week, we learned that we sinned. Everybody make that X with your arm. That's the second part of the gospel. And when we learned about how we have sinned, we learned that our sin separates us from God. Let's look at that second part where it says understand. Everybody point to your finger to where the word says understand. Okay, let's read that together. God's salvation is eternal. Nothing can separate a believer from God's love. And so that third part of the gospel says that God provided. So everybody make that X with your arm, and we're going to change that X into a cross. And everybody say with me, God provided. Good job. He provided a way for our sins to be forgiven, for that separation between us and God to be erased, and for us to be able to spend eternity with God. God sent Jesus to live a perfect life and to die on the cross so that he could take the punishment for our sin. Okay? Look at where it says discover and read that with me. It says God's salvation is a gift that every person needs and can receive. So the fourth part of our gospel says that Jesus gives. And remember, we hold, we pretend like we're holding a gift in our hand and we reach it out in front of us. Everybody say Jesus gives. Good job, friends. So Jesus gives us the gift of salvation. Jesus gave Paul the gift of salvation in our story, didn't he? If we believe that Jesus is God's son who died on the cross for us, and if we confess our sin and ask Jesus to have a relationship with us, we can experience a transformation in our lives just like Paul did. We can go from being a sinner to someone who is forgiven. We can go from being separated from God to being in a relationship with God. And we can go from being an enemy of Jesus to a friend of Jesus. And so the final part of the gospel says we respond. And so everybody put your hands up in the air. Yeah, we respond. In order to receive Jesus' gift of salvation and for transformation to happen in our lives, we have to respond to the gospel. We have to pray a prayer and talk to God about it. If you're watching this and you want to pray that prayer of salvation and experience the transformation that we've been talking about today and that you saw in Paul's life, I want you to go talk to your parents or grandparents about it. You also can, can ask your parents to help you contact with me. You can call or email me because I would love to talk to you about it and to celebrate that decision with you. Even after we've become a Christian, God continues to transform us. Everybody say that with me. God continues to transform us. Good job. He will be with us every single day and help us to grow and to follow him. Remember that God sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life. And Jesus is our example. The more we read our Bibles and learn about Jesus, the more we can become like him. When this video is over, I want you guys to look at page 24 and 25 in your activity books. There are lots of fun things that you can do that go along with all the things that we just learned in our lesson. And don't forget that there are five days worth of devotions to where every single day you can meet with God, spend some time with him, and learn more about all these things that we're learning about in our Define series. And that's on page 26 to 29 in your activity books. All right, friends, before we go, we're going to pray. So I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads, and clap on three. Ready? One, two, three. God, you are a real transformer. Thank you for the story of Saul's transformation in the Bible. It shows us that you can help us go from unbelief to belief. You can take us from being sinners separated from you to being forgiven and having a relationship with you. You can lead us from being an enemy of Jesus to being a friend of Jesus. And God, we want that relationship with you. And we want you to continue transforming us even after we've decided to place our faith in you and become a Christian. Help us to continue learning more about you and following after you. God, we love you so much, and thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. In your precious name we pray, amen. All right, friends, go look in your activity books on page 24 and 25 and do all those fun activities, and I will see you next week. Bye, friends. Love you.